Hello everyone, this is Jack and this is a new video for Tailblox. Uh, I can't do videos as much as I used to anymore because it's generally noisy around here. Um, so I apologise for that. But you can always follow me on Twitter, I do a lot more updates there, I try and do one update a day. Uh, but this video is for those who don't follow me on Twitter but still like watching the videos. Um, so I'll just jump into it because there's been a lot of changes, I can't go through all it right now. So I'll just jump in and make it up as I go. Okay, so I'm just going to rescale the menu there, I don't know if it actually rescales probably. Uh, so yes, you know about the achievements. So we've got an option screen now, so you can change like the window resolution. Uh, if you go full screen it goes full, um, full resolution anyway. Uh, you can change the view distance. I'm going to have it on near because that seems to work best for the memory management and everything as well. Um, music, sound effects. This doesn't do anything yet because I put the option in. Then when I turned the clouds on, I realised they were broken. Um, it's a game maker problem. It's <laughs> it's nothing I've, I'm doing wrong. It seems to hit like a point where at 444 um, vertex, um, vertexes, well no, well, polys. So times that by three in this your number. When it hits that number, it seems to just die. It, there's no error. It just crashes. When I reach 444 polys, when I build a cloud, I don't know why. It doesn't do it when I'm building chunks, so I have no idea what that is. Um, I'm gonna just have to rip it all apart and rewrite it because I cannot work it out. It's that's the only thing wrong with it. Um, yeah, you can't change this at, at the moment either because I'm gonna make a new widget for this. So this is just to, this widget is to go through um, a list of items. But for FOV, um, Field of View, I want it so that you have like a, um, a bar, a scale that you can change between a range of numbers. Uh, oh yeah, we have a mods thing. So you can click this now to um, open up a window to your PC and you can select images. And there's only one in here at the moment because I haven't added any more. Um, so yeah, we can save and load the game now. And I recently just I just added this today. It tells you what type of game it was. So it could be creative or adventure. Uh, this one's creative because it's bugged loading adventure mode at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna click that and go into it. Um, yeah. So let's go into. Oh yeah, one of the things I've added is um, animations, but it's not quite finished. So like you can see, he bobs his head and his arms wobble and stuff like that. As you can see, but um, he, he's meant to move from side to side as well. Uh, but at the moment, that's a bit, it doesn't work because it doesn't inherit. Uh, like the body, well, it, he rotates around the legs, but the body doesn't follow the legs, the head doesn't follow the body. So all those bits are just individually rotating in their own space. Looks a bit weird. So I need to fix that. Um, but then animations are basically done. All I need after that is a visual editor. So I can actually, you know, instead of messing around with numbers not really knowing what they look like I can just drag or move sliders around to animate him. It's a keyframe um, system so all I have to do is set up the first keyframe that he starts on then do the next one and then the system interpolates all the animations of him at once between 0 and 1. So uh, you can have as many keyframes per part of the figure so like I'll try and explain this because it's I'm quite happy with it actually. Uh, so altogether he's a figure but he's made out of models so the arms are individual models, the body is a model, the uh, legs are a model, the feet are a model and the head and the hat together are a model. Um, so the models can all be animated individually and they can all have as many keyframes as they want but as a whole figure the animation goes from 0 to 1 so these are all interpolated over their, all their keyframes in that range. So that's how I get him to but his head has like four or five keyframes, but his arms only have three. But it, it puts them all together, that's why his head moves faster. So I'm quite happy with how that worked out. It's a really good system and it's quite it's reasonably fast. Considering it's not using a shader or anything. I mean that would be the ideal. At the moment it just uses uh separate models, draws them all at once, and yeah, transforms the models. Um, oh, as you can see, I added. There we go. I added um, grass to the savanna biome. 
I can't even remember if last video I had biomes, so let's just uh, have a quick fly through. So this is the savannah biome. Um, it's got slightly less trees and it's duller than the temperate biome. And this is a temperate biome. It generally has the normal amount of trees and it's green and grass. Um, over here I think I saw desert. Yep. So this is desert biome and it's just really hot. Oh yeah, that's how the biomes are selected. They have um, temperature and humidity, which is like a separate, two separate noise functions, uh, and it blends them together. And it says if it's this hot and this humid, then make this biome. If it's this cold, this dry, or something, then do this. Um, so if I follow the savanna, I might be able to hit a jungle. And here we go. So yeah, because it's temperature based, you can predict where the next biomes are going to be. <coughs> They're not just randomly placed and fused together. So if you're next to a savanna, you know that one side of it might be a desert, the other side of it might be a jungle. So this is sort of more realistic. So yeah, this is a jungle, it's quite dense. And ideally I'd have it it would have its own colour grass, but at the moment I'm just using this. Just because it looked really horrible when it was flat. Anyway, that's the jungle. And if I can find a cold area, I'll show you the other ones. Oh yeah, what I'll show you at the moment while I'm here is the water reflect. Um, ah, what's it called? It's not. Ref is it refraction? When it's not reflection, but it's the other one. Um, but yeah, you can see this. Uh, it distorts the water. Distorts whatever's underneath it. At the moment, this isn't done properly. It's just using the the blue color of the water to determine the distortion. But that's quite handy. And that's a post-processing effect, so I haven't got an option for that yet, but you can turn it on in the any e file. So yeah. Oh yeah, here we go. This is the tiger biome. And this this is meant to be the most common biome, the tiger biome, because that's more realistic to Earth. Earth most of Earth is tiger. Uh, but you know, like Siberia and all that stuff, you don't really go there, but there's tons of it. Um, so this will be the most common and it will be difficult to survive in. But, oh, and this is Tundra. This is like the least complete one at the moment. It's just a color change at the moment. Uh, but the Tundra will have like small, will have lots of grass, but no real trees or anything. And it will have lots of rocky outcrops and stuff like that. Uh, oh, here's some snow. That is actually snow as well. So I don't think we're going to get to a really cold place yet. Um, oh, here's ice. So you can you can walk on ice and then not get out of it because you're an idiot and you jumped in there. Let's see if I can get out of it from another way, like over here maybe. This, this looks promising. No, I'm stuck. There we go. <laughs> when in doubt, cheat. Um. Let's see if we can... no, fly camera. So this is cold area, but I don't think we're going to hit the ice caps. There is an ice cap bone where it's snow on top, but if you dig down it's just ice. Like permafrost sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that is that would be completely un uninhabitable. Yeah, I don't like the tundra at the moment. I think it needs to change colour as well. It's meant to look like gravel, but still grassy. I don't know. Oh, as you can hear, I've put the music back in as well. Um, the music system is a bit, um, is a lot better than it used to be. Uh, at the moment, it randomly selects. Um, well, at the moment, when you load them in, it puts them into categories. At the moment, they're all in category called all, which is basically all of them. But the idea is that I'll be able to put it into categories like savanna and uh, tiger, so you'd have music tracks play when you enter different biomes. Uh, so that's all. That's all set up to be able to do that. I just haven't done it yet because I haven't. Don't think I've got enough soundtracks to do it properly, properly or nicely. Because I don't want you to be stuck in a tiger biome and listening to the same song on repeat. So that's why I haven't done that yet. I'm looking to get more music. Um, so yes, that's that. Uh, as you can see up here, I've, this is this is just what I did today. I just drew that, and I changed this as well. I changed the mini map um, image so it's used the same colours as this and looks a bit more consistent. I'm going to shrink it down because it's a bit big for everything else here. 
Uh, but basically, this will be your stats menu, so it will have your health and your first. Uh, maybe hunger? I don't know. This is going to be experience, but I might do hunger, health, hunger, and first. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, I'll play with it and see what actually happens. Oops. I like doing this. <laughs> um, yeah, so because I have this, the um, short view distance, the memory management, management is quite good. I know it's broken at the moment. If you read that, it says minus 1,259 megabytes. And that says, because it's, it's taken away from meta rather than vertex. So, yeah, this is actually correct. This is how much memory the game is using for the resources you see on screen. But at the moment it's not taking the, it away from vertex memories, so it's keep adding to that, taking away from that. So while the result is still correct, these are both wrong. But, <laughs> I don't know, it's just weird. But yeah, it's on the short, um, small view distance, the memory management works really well, and you're never going to run out of memory. And it still loads quite fast. I'm still working on optimizing it a bit more. Like changing the lighting system to be a post-processing effect, shadows and everything, because it occurred to me that I didn't want to do shadow mapping in the proper sense where you sort of have a separate camera and you have to render the whole world again from a, from the perspective of the sun, because that would be well, it's quite complicated in the voxel game because you've got a lot of space to cover, and yeah, I really didn't want to do that. I might still do it eventually, just because I know people are gonna want it and go, oh, why haven't you got shadow mapping and stuff like that, because they always do, there's always something people want. Um, but what I was thinking of doing the top down, because all I need is a 2D map with the height data on it, and you've essentially got a 2D shadow map. So I was going to use that instead, because I've already, I'm already using, I'm already creating this, this mini map, which is drawing pixels, all I need to do is the same thing, but just paint height data to it. Um, which I could even do on the same minimap using alpha, using the alpha channel. So that should be pretty easy, and then just pass it to the shader with the ver um, with the chunk itself, and do the checks in there. But that, unfortunately, because you can't read images in the vertex buffer and um, vertex shader, it would be in the it would be a per pixel thing, and I don't know if that would be better because they get this sort of tapering off effect, it'll need to be multiple samples, at least nine samples per pixel, and that seems a bit drastic. I mean, it would look a lot smoother than this, but I, I, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. I know in theory it would work, but I don't know, it might be too slow. So I haven't done that yet. Um, anyway, as for this interface stuff I just did done, um, health, hunger and first, um, that's going to be something I'm going to try and put in today in a very basic sense. So if you you lose health and everything, and you'll die, and you know game will end, that sort of thing. And it will be a very simple idea of just finding water to fill up your thirst, and finding food to fill up your hunger. And at the moment, food will just be berries or something on bushes. So it's not going to be anything massively complicated. It's just to get in some essence of gameplay in there. And then I want to work on the animation system, get that finished, because once that's finished, I can start animating the mobs. Because they're pretty easy to model. This, the modeling system isn't too complicated, even just pissing around with numbers. But yeah, animating them is still the bugger. So I'll be doing that. Um, I'll need to design some new trees. So especially for the tiger biome, which this is not. What is this? This is ice cap. No, this is oh, there's that. Yeah, let's see. You get ice on the ground now. That's what I was talking about. So in very, 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 very cold areas, you can get ice on the ground. I'm gonna make it turn into water or something when you destroy it. But I haven't got water physics in yet either. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about water physics, and I'm gonna mock it up in 2D first. And then do it in 3D because it's a lot easier to get a gauge of performance in a uh, in 2D. 
a lot less things going on. This is weird, you got an ice cap in the middle of the thing. That's, that's, there's a few things wrong here, I think. But yeah, I want uh, new trees for the jungle biome and... Well, I say jungle, rain, rainforest biome. Same thing, but... Um, and the tiger biome, they want. They both need taller trees and the tiger biome needs like big pines or something to actually stand out. Um, I don't know, what else have I got on this list here? Very basic stuff here. Um, oh, I'm going to have to rewrite the terrain generation because it's kind of weird when you have like savannah on top of big hills, it really should be rolling plains and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's going to be weird. But I'm looking at it. Ore out, um, ore deposits and stuff, so you can dig up ore, and that will be used for something later on. Um, mini map, a bit of um. Oh yeah, distant 3D terrain. So I was thinking, at the moment, because the one I have is when you get, when you start generating dist um, chunks far away, it's a lot slower because it has to generate a lot more of them because of the field of view. Um, but I was thinking of instead of using uh, the voxel data to generate a terrain, just use the base height map and generate a normal 3D terrain for the distant distance and you should be able to get a much higher view distance out of that and not really lose any speed and you'll be able to have bigger areas and stuff but it requires swapping a lot of things around in regards to the order I do things but I think it'll be worth it um, what else have we got here? Block degrading, so you can actually, when you hit a block, it degrades a little bit. And I want to do it differently than before, so I don't want you to hold the key and it goes ch -ch 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 and eventually dies. I want it so you hit it, you can walk away and come back a little bit later and hit it again. And that will keep that degradation, but only for a certain amount of time. So you have to keep clicking it. I think that will make it much more laborious to dig, which is what I'm going for. Uh, I've got so many things on this to-do list. Cover several pages here. Oh, point lights. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, uh, I've been thinking that, well, at first I kind of want to add a nighttime sort of thing or change the lighting some way so I could say what the global illumination is. Um, stuff like that. So I'll be looking into that. Um, doo -doo -doo. Fixing some stuff. Oh, yeah, texture pack editor. So, like, an image editor in the game. I think might be helpful for people who want to make texture packs. Uh, how f I mean, on this sort of texture, this is for um, all vectory and stuff, that'll be quite difficult. Um, I don't really want to make a vector editor in here. It's running quite slow now, what's happening? I don't know why it's running slow now. Whatever, probably recording. Um, Crafting, I don't know what I would craft yet, but I'll put it there. Uh, physics blocks, water physics. Uh, oh yeah, fixing clouds, I already mentioned that. Split screen mode so you can play with someone else, that'd be handy. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. And finite worlds, which I've mentioned before. That'd be cool to have. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I can think about for now. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.